Well, alrighty, gang. Welcome back to the Gutowski Files, starring Stephen Gutowski. He is the founder of TheReload.com and the host of the weekly Reload podcast. This week, we have important stuff to talk about. Not that we don't every week, but this week, I want to kind of get right to it because I have limited time, and I want to make sure Stephen has enough time to talk about this, and I think this is critical. Um, we're actually talking about... This is not a paid endorsement, but I am a brand ambassador for Heckler & Koch for a reason. HK firearms are incredibly high quality, and when it's time to step up out of the entry tier, they're the only ones I recommend. You carry a gun just in case. Shouldn't it be an HK just in case? Can I use the word reportage, Stephen? Is that a, is that a word? Is that I guess, a word? Yeah. yeah. Reportage. Yeah. So, we're, so if we're talking about um, like recently the, the Washington Post, which was my newspaper mm. of record as a young man growing up in the D.C. area and was mm. for a long time a well-respected newspaper of record, kind of like the New York Times and L.A. Times. Chicago. Sure. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, and recently they did a, uh, I guess you'd call it a piece, a story, where they published uh, a lot of very graphic photos. And this was something that traditionally they didn't do. And so Stephen, over at The Reload, wrote an article entitled, it's an analysis piece, The Washington Post's Problematic Approach to Publishing Gory Mass Murder Photos. And the idea being that this is something traditionally they didn't do, and they decided to do it very specifically, and they decided to pick very specific cases, uh, the pictures of which to show. So Stephen, talk to us about what's going on and your take on that. Yeah, and and I want you know I felt like we should talk about this because uh, you know obviously I uh, wanted to get your view and and some of the differences that you and I see between what the Washington Post has done here and for instance what active self protection does sure. uh, because obviously active self protection videos involve uh, graphic violence uh, in in many of them uh, but the the reasoning behind why we you guys publish them is is quite different I think from. The, what the Washington Post has done with these mass shooting images, um, you know, there's there's a number of problems really, I think, with with what the Post did and how they justified it. Uh, so for those who don't know and haven't seen, they published photos of the aftermath of 11 shootings, um, mass shootings, you know, incidents like Sandy Hook and Uvalde um, and Las Vegas, and some of them uh, feature body bags, uh, some feature actual dead bodies. Uh, the Las Vegas picture features a number of dead bodies in a field. Um, and they're, they're, you know, they're quite graphic. And uh, the justification that the Post used for this boiled down to essentially the idea that people, the American people should see these pictures because they don't understand the, uh, I guess, the, the force of an AR-15 and what it can do. Um, and you'll notice there I said AR-15, and that is because the pictures they published at the Post only come from incidents that involve AR-15s. And, uh, you know, this was another sort of issue. Uh, one, you know, beyond the idea, the, beyond the, the decision to sort of lower their standards to publish these graphic images in the first place, because, you know, they, they talk about, and uh, there were a couple pieces that they published sort of explaining their reasoning. But they talked about why traditionally most major media outlets like the Post don't publish graphic, violent images of this nature. Uh, and that is out of the fear that it may dehumanize the victims and re-traumatize these victims' families or survivors, um, which I think are pretty legitimate concerns um, and which seem to have come true if you've uh, seen some of the reaction from uh, victims' families. Some of them have been pretty upset uh, at, at the publication of these images. Some of them are for it. I do want to make sure that's clear. Like some, okay. some uh, victims' families want these pictures to be out there for the same reason that the the post kind of articulates, which is that uh, you know they they want people to uh, see the the brutality firsthand. Um, and uh, so there is there's a split among victims' families, as you might expect with anything. Like people are going to have different different opinions on what should be done. So the, um, the pictures are all exclusively from mass shootings that involved AR-15s. So AR-15 was used in the shooting, right? That's Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And I think that's, that's one of the bigger problems with it. You know, I think there's an, a basic level issue with publishing this kind of graphic content in the first place as a newspaper, because the logic they used essentially could be justified to publish any graphic image 
um, you know, because they're saying, well, we, we want to make sure people understand what this actually looks like. Uh, and traditionally, large papers or large media outlets, they have occasionally published graphic images, but usually that's reserved for incidents like war crimes. Right. Um, for instance, uh, Buka, Ukraine, the Russian war crimes that were carried out there. You had the, the New York Times and several other publications publish graphic images uh, along the same lines uh, as what the Post published here. Um, or obviously the October 7th attacks by Hamas in Israel. You have seen major publications uh, circulate the uh, graphic images from those attacks. But generally speaking, at least my understanding has always been that is done because you're trying to, you know, document a war crime. You're trying to uh, establish that this really happened because the people who perpetrated it, for one, like the Russian uh, government, will often try to deny that that this happened or cover up uh, evidence of it. So right. that's one of the main driving impulses for why you publish those those pictures. And then second, uh, it's to, uh, I guess, reveal the lengths that an organized group is willing to go to to accomplish their either political or religious uh, objectives, mm -hmm. right? So uh, that's usually in the case where the organized group that carried out the attack represents an ongoing threat. So obviously the Russian army in Ukraine presents an ongoing threat to carry out more war crimes like what happened in Bukha or Hamas continues to present a threat to uh, the civilians in Israel in the same way they did on October 7th. So the when you t talk about mass shootings and publishing pictures from those, uh, you know, it's not the same level uh, of justification, I don't think. So that's one major issue. And then, yes, you get to the selective nature of this because the Post only published photos from mass shootings that featured AR-15s. And uh, one, they twisted themselves into all kinds of logical pretzels to get to the point where they only picked images from shootings that involved AR-15s. Uh, and, you know, Cam Edwards from Bearing Arms and I did a whole uh, podcast episode on this, and we could dive into a little bit more of that. But, but you know, I think uh, as, as somebody who has seen a lot of uh, graphic images of, of gun violence or just violence generally, you know, as well as I do, that images from other shootings or other mass killings uh, are probably just as brutal as these images, but the post chose to to leave them out. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I would say, having having been the first to respond to an active shooter, kind of before this was post Columbine, but before it was sort of a byword where everyone was familiar with the idea. Uh, mine wasn't a school shooting, but it was at a gym for young uh, young people uh, in, a, in in a troubled area that were you know were there to learn um, box a boxing gym basically. And, you know, the, the person who, who went to shoot that up didn't plan it out. It was an employee who'd been let go, and there's, there's only theories on why he was let go. And he went home and armed himself and came back and started blindly shooting into this gym full of kids and, and trainers. Um, and I, when I went in there, um, we're reasonably sure that the, the shooter dropped a gun and ran, and he ran right by me as I'm running, and that's how close I was. And I can tell you that he was using a 9 millimeter handgun. And... It was carnage. There was there was people shot all over the place. There was you know there was uh, things that I, I won't repeat here because they're too they're too awful and too graphic. But it does an AR-15. The the only practical difference I can see with someone using that versus anything else is range. I guess they they want to do it from further away because once you're if you're going from classroom to classroom like in, in any of these terrible shootings like Uvalde or Sandy Hook. You're not you're not shooting someone at 500 yards. You know the the the, the gun that you're using is not irrelevant, but it, it, I just don't understand how I, I can understand if they're trying to make their point that mass shootings are bad and and or guns should be curtailed because they're too easy to get or whatever. But singling out AR-15s is it's almost a, an obsession with some people. I feel like it's very odd. It's very specific. Yeah, and I I feel like it's a bit misleading as you're getting at here, right? Because uh, you know, the, obviously there are differences that make the AR-15 uh, more effective in uh, certainly in like defensive situations. If you're going up against, uh, for instance, when I was when that escaped murderer was near my family's farm and he had a mm -hmm. rifle, I wanted an AR-15 because it gave me more range than my handguns do. But 
he, the reality is in a mass shooting environment where you are uh, um, in almost all cases shooting at people who are defenseless and at short distances, there isn't a whole lot of difference, I think, in the effectiveness or the, the difference between these different kinds of, of weapons. Um, and certainly I don't think there's going to be a huge aesthetic difference in how these things look in the aftermath yeah, yeah, and photos and videos regardless and my, my point yeah. my point was going to be look if you want to single out ar-15 shootings uh let's let's look at glock 19 shootings because that's a super duper common pistol the ar-15 is the most popular rifle in the country so i feel like yeah it's going to be used more mm -hmm. often than some you know than a, than a man liquor carcano or something like it's just going to get used more often. it's like saying most most drunk driving fatal accidents happen in Honda Civics. Okay, that's not relevant to why they happen or right. how deadly they are. It's just it happens to be that's a very popular car. Does that make any sense or is that a bad analogy? No, I think that's that's part of why you see AR-15 show up um, in some of these higher profile incidents. Uh, yeah, I just I think um, when you're looking at the when you look at these incidents, it's just not a huge difference what kind of weapon. Right. It's used, especially firearm, but even, even in, you know, and 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 the problem too with just publishing photos of the aftermath of shootings that involved an AR-15, um, besides the sort of logical uh, tangling they had to do to get to why they did it this way, um, is, is that you're you're misleading people because it's it's just 